Hi, this is Chris with Launch Code, and uh, in the past video, we set up our new event tag join class. In this video, we're going to use that class to allow uh, our application to actually relate tags and events to each other using uh, the UI or through through a view. Okay, so essentially, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to go to a URL that say looks like or has a path that looks like this. So say tag slash add event slash five, where five is the um, the ID of the event to add a tag to. And then what I want to see is I want to see a drop down of tags that are uh, tags that are available for me to add. And when I select one of those and hit submit, it will add that tag to that event. Okay, so that's what we that's our end goal. So I'm going to start by creating a view model for this, um, essentially because the view model is going to be what sort of shapes and defines the data that's need to render and submit our form. So I'm going to go into my view models directory and add a new class. And this is going to be called, let's see, let's call this add event tag view model, since that's going to be what it's doing. All right, and what properties do we want our view model to have? So uh, since we're going to be adding a tag to a specific event, we're going to need to know what that event is. So let's add a couple of properties that help us um, keep track of, oops, the event, too many tabs there, there we go, event ID, and then the actual event itself. All right, and there we go, okay. And that needs to be imported. Okay, so these are two properties that I can use to keep track of my event. Um, my form will also need a list of available tags to add to that event. So let's create uh, something that does that. Recall that we've typically used a list of select list items. And we'll call this uh, tags. And I probably need a using statement here as well. There we go. And, uh, and one more. All right. There we go. And that'll be used to render our form in the drop down and then I also need the tag that's going to be um, chosen so when the when the, the the form is posted I'm going to need to know which specific tag the user chose to add to the event so that will require a tag ID recall that our views don't know anything about objects they just work with IDs so uh, when the user selects a tag from the drop down the value of that specific option in the drop down will be the tag ID uh, and that'll be what we use to uh, to uh, determine what the user uh, wanted to tag the event with, okay? And so this view model is going to need a little bit of setup, all right? So I have an empty constructor here, but I need a not empty constructor, so. And this constructor is going to need uh, to, essentially the, the only thing it's gonna need to do for now, it'll do some more work later, um, it's going to need to uh, configure both this event object and this tags collection. So it's going to need two parameters. It's going to need uh, an event, and we'll call it the event. And then it's going to need um, a list of tags. And we'll just call that possible tags. And so what's going to happen is these will, this, this uh, view model, as, as is typically the case, will be built in one of our controllers, and that controller will pass in the event that we want to add a tag to, and then the list of possible tags, and it'll, the controller will do the work of retrieving those from the database, since the controller has access to the DB context and our view models do not. So what I'll do here in this constructor is first I'll just initialize um, this collection to be empty, and then I want to loop through the list of available tags and add a new select list item each time I go through that. So I'll say for each var tag in tags, possible tags. And then what I want to do here is say tags dot add. And then I want to create a new select list item. And that will have a value, which will be the tag dot ID. And we have to turn that into a string. And then the text Recall the value is the, the data gets posted to the server, the text is the uh, text that's displayed in the dropdown that the user sees. We want them to see the name of the tag, okay? 
So this will loop through the collection of possible tags and for each one create the corresponding select list item and that will be used to render our dropdown. The final thing we need to do here is to uh, just set the value of this event object here to be the event here. So let's say event equals the event since that will get passed into the view as well. Let's see, I think that's it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so this is our view model. This models the data that we're gonna have in our view. Let's go ahead and create our view. So we'll go to views, tag, and I'm gonna create a new razor page. And I'm gonna call this add event. All right, and I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this one. I've, um, I've, I've written the code for this already. And, and the reason I'm gonna do this is just to sort of, for the sake of time, uh, we um, have a lot to cover in this video. And so I wanna focus on the things that are new. So I've got this code here and I'm gonna copy paste it and I'll talk, I'll talk you through it for sure. Um, here is the code for this add event view. So uh, the controller is gonna pass in the model object for this view to be an instance of the class we just created, add event tag view model. And so that's gonna have all the data that we just saw. Uh, the heading is going to be add event or add tag to event and then it's gonna use that model to retrieve the name of the event that we wanna add a tag to. Um, and so uh, that will be displayed as the header. And then our form itself is going to post to the same location that this that this lives at. So it's gonna to post to the tag controller, the add event action method, which of course we have not created yet. And the inputs are twofold. So let's talk about this bottom one first. This one is probably um, more familiar to you. This is going to be a dropdown that will have a list of the tags. So recall in our view model, we had a property called tags that we uh, created with a bunch of select list items that had IDs and names for those tags. And so this will be rendered uh, properly given uh, that select list item and the way it was populated in the view model. So that's pretty clear. So this one is just gonna be what the user selects to, to determine which tag they want to add to the event. Now, when this form is posted, the controller needs to know which specific events the, the user wants to add the tag to, okay? So recall that this form lives at and I might have deleted this already. I did, let's see if I can get it back. Nope. It lives at something like tag slash add event slash five. And so this ID is going to be used to set the value of this event field and that'll be passed into the view and you'll be able to see the name of that specific event with ID five here. We then need to make sure we're passing that same ID back to the controller when this data is posted or when the form is posted. So I need to put an input that keeps track of which specific event ID we're talking about. Now this isn't something I want the user to, to have to enter. I don't want them to touch it. I don't want them to muck with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, an input of type hidden. And if you've never seen this before, this just is an input that's in the form that gets, uh, that data gets sent to the server, but it's not actually rendered in, in a visual way. The user doesn't get to work with this input. It doesn't get to see, the user doesn't get to see this input. Um, and so the name of this is event ID. So this is going to be um, the value of this. This is why we had this event ID property back on our view model. When model binding occurs and this event view model, event tag view model uh, is built on the post, this will be populated with the value of this particular hidden input. We see that value is set to model.events.id, which uh, in our hypothetical example here would be five. So this is just basically how we keep track of, it's a little bookkeeping device of keeping track of which event we're talking about between our get and post requests to make sure that we're not losing that information since we need both the tag ID and the event ID to properly uh, create a relationship. Okay, so that is our form. Let's go in and work on our controllers. So this is going to be in the tag controller that will be working with this code. So let's see, controllers, tag controller, all right, and I'll go to the bottom. And I'm going to create a public I action. Oops. And we're gonna call this uh, add events, given our default naming scheme. And recall that this needs a path parameter called ID, because we need to know, it's gonna say slash tag, slash add event, slash ID. Uh, and uh, we need to know um, which ID the user wants to add the event to. Okay, so um, this error is just gonna persist for a minute until we get down to our return statement. So let's go ahead and write our initial code. When the user passes in this ID, they're saying, hey, I wanna add an event to 
or I want to add a tag to this specific event. So we're going to go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is just retrieve that event from the database. And we're going to use that using our context. All right, so that's something we've done before. Um, the next thing we need to do is, you know, eventually we're going to want to pass in, let me go ahead and add that return statement. We're going to say return, and we're going to return a view model instance. So this will be a local variable. And that view model will be something like the add events tag view model. And so we're going to need to pass in to this particular constructor the stuff that it needs. So recall that our constructor over here needs the event that we're talking about, and it needs a list of possible tags. So we have the event. We already have that, so let's put that in there. We don't have a list of possible tags. So we need to uh, go ahead and that's the next thing we need to do to make this whole thing work. So let's say uh, possible tags equals, it's going to be a list of tags, um, equals, and so I just want to get all of the tags out of the database. So context.tag tags uh, to list. Yep, there we go, to list. Okay, and then I can pass that into here. And that will work, and this just had autocorrected, so let's fix that. Okay, so to recap, our get handler will uh, take in the ID of an event that we want to add a tag to. It'll find that specific event object from the database. It'll then collect a list of all of the tags from the database, since we're going to want to show each of those options to the user in the dropdown. It creates the view model from those two pieces of data, and then it renders the view passing in the view model. So that's our tag controller uh, with the get handler. Now we want to make the post handler. So this is going to be have the same um, uh, similar signature, at least not the exact same signature. This is going to first handle HTTP post requests. So let's put that in there. And then it's going to be a public uh, action result add event. And what do we need to take as an input parameter here? Well, uh, similar to uh, most of our post handlers, we want to have a view model coming in that's, that's um, created and populated using event or model binding. So this is going to be an instance of our event tag view model. Okay. And this view model will have data um, in it that's from the form submission. So in particular, it's going to have, we hope, if everything worked correctly, an event ID and a tag ID, and that will tell us exactly what we need to do in order to relate these two, uh, those two corresponding objects. Um, of course, uh, as in most event, uh, most, um, sorry, most <laughs> post, uh, post uh, request form processing uh, action methods, we want to validate the model state. Oh, man. Okay, model state, if model state dot is valid. There we go. We got it today. We got it. Okay. And so if the model state's valid, we want to do some stuff. If not, we want to return the view and send it back with the same view model they came with. Okay, so now we need to do some work in here. So what do we want to do inside of this block? So this is basically saying that model state is valid. We've got the data we need. Um, let's go ahead and uh, figure out how to relate an event and a tag. If, if, if everything went as, as, as expected, this view model should have an event ID and a tag ID that should represent the two objects that we want to relate. So let's go ahead and start by just retrieving those objects. So we'll say events ID So that's the ID of the events that we want to uh, relate and then we have the, the, the ID of the tag we want to relate. Okay, and uh, what I can do with this, in order to create an event tag object, let's see, let's go back to our event tag object. This is what we want to do. This is Remember that an event tag is what forms that relationship between events and tags. And so um, what I want to do in creating, a, adding a tag to an event is basically create a new event tag object and save that to the database, and that'll essentially save that relationship. So I can do that by either providing an event and a tag, or I can provide an event ID and a tag ID. So in this case, I'm just going to use the IDs. It's a little bit more efficient than fetching those objects from the database. So I will say events tag uh, 
and I will create this with those two uh, properties. Okay, so this creates a new event tag object, essentially a new relationship between a specific event and a specific tag. And then the only thing I have left to do is to context dot event tags dot add. This will add it to my collection, my persistent collection rather, and then I need to save it. Okay. And then finally, once we're done with this, uh, we want to we need to go back to some sort of view. So typically in a post request, you want to do a redirect. Um, in this case, we're going to return redirect. And where do we want to redirect them to? Let's, re -redir let's redirect them to the events detail view for this specific event, OK? Because that's eventually where we're going to display the tags for the event. So we'll say re redirect them to events dot slash detail slash. Uh, and then I need to that with the event ID. So this is the new view, recall, that we created in the first video for this lesson that shows the, all the details for a specific event. Um, that doesn't have, in, that doesn't currently display the event's tags, but we're going to be adding that in a future video, so this is a good place to send them. All right, so I think that all works. Let's go ahead and uh, start up the application and test it out. In 102, to test this out, we, we have a form that will allow us to uh, add a new um, uh, um, tag to an event first. Let me see. But we don't really have a lot of good ways to get to that form, and we don't have a lot of good ways to see the results of that form. So we're going to have to kind of do some manual URL creation. Let me open up the database here. Mm -hmm. Let's try to restart it there. Okay, here we go. So in my events table, I have two events, uh, and they have IDs one and two. Let's go and see what I have in my tags table. In my tags table, I have events uh, three, three tags with uh, IDs one, two, and three. So I don't have any sort of links to get here. We'll fix that in a future video. So I'm going to need to go to the URL that we configured um, this to work at. So it's slash tag slash add event and then I need the ID of an event so let me just say I'm going to add a tag to event number one okay and so this was good this is the code with pride event that corresponds to what we just saw in the database um, over here that event ID one is called code with pride and I have a list of the all of the available tags there's three of them that is good let's say that we want to add the JavaScript tag to this event so we'll do this and we'll click add tag we got redirected to our events detail view for event with ID one. That is good as well. Let's go see if there are any event tags in the database. And indeed there are. So this join table has two columns and this says um, the only relationship between tags and events is that the event with ID one relates to the tag with ID two. That indeed does appear to have worked. So that's the basic work of establishing a relationship and saving it to the database using our join table and our join class. Um, we still, like I said, we still had to kind of manually type in some uh, URL paths and we still don't display those tags. So we're going to do some additional work to kind of make our UI more friendly uh, and uh, more verbose in terms of the information displayed um, in the next few videos.